So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the drop technique. So first I make a super thin slab. Tyvek, Tyvek's kind of the best because it, it doesn't stick or it just is handy. I can use it over and over. Tyvek is what they wrap buildings, but you get them in FedEx envelopes. So very handy. Okay, so you can see how thin that is. Let me cut it so you'll see even more. That's how thin it is. So then the next step is putting pieces down on the tie back. Usually you want to do even coils, but on this project, somehow I like doing uneven ones. So I'm thinking of a diagonal kind of design. Okay, and then I'm going to put a few more things in. This will be really thin. It will be dropped on top of this. And then this piece hugs that, but it, you, you're working without putting the hands on the front. And it's a very clean kind of image. So this apparently originated with John Gill at Alfred. And then it was shown to me by Chris Cox. And then I just changed one or two things. And I think a lot of things work that way. So I got interested in hobo symbols maybe 20 years ago. And a simple red cross is a sign for all right. And hobos would leave signs in charcoal often on fence posts. But they had to be indiscreet. So this is one of them. Well, I was so interested in African symbols. And then someone, some bright potter said, well, that's not really your country. That's not really your set of symbols. And I thought, well, he has a point. So it took, I was kind of on the lookout for symbols that would be more my country. So, I mean, 80% of high school boys were riding the rails in the 30s because, and one guy never got over it. He said his father actually asked him to leave home. He said, we can't feed you anymore. So it was a huge change in our country during the Depression. And my mother grew up during the Depression and wore the same dress backwards and forwards all through college for dates. So that's a spiral and that's a pre-Christian women's symbol. And it's also means in English hobo symbolism, a good job can be found here. If you want to do a specific a face or a dinosaur or something, it's better to get it drier first because it, when I was making horses for my younger daughter, they turned into dinosaurs, which did not make me a popular mother. Okay. Now let's move this over for the glorious moment of the drop. I might as well get rid of this because it'll just cause problems probably. Should get rid of that too, but. So there's the first drop. There's the second drop. Get rid of that. It's not going down as fast as there. See, I don't mind when it scrunches up like that, but you can see how it's starting to outline much more in detail. And there it keeps going. And there that keeps going. This is a problem with the spiral. They sometimes need encouragement. And air bubbles do get trapped. So when I saw this, I decided I really wanted to add another thing. And since I've sewn so much over the years, I thought of soft pleats. So first I'm going to release it so I can make the soft pleats. So, so far, oh, and this side can be used, is really great if you're interested in colored clay because it's embedded in everything. So I'm going to lead this in. It's already sort of suggested there. This is a problem with a crease paper because there's the crease right there. So I want to 
counterbalance that. And let's get one going in here. So you don't know how this is going to turn out, and I'll probably do another one after this, but let's just get this started. So now it has a more organic quality. All right, so now let's see where I want to change it. That's coming apart. Let's do one right in here. Wanting to curl up. Okay. So now I'm scoring the back, well, the top of this, because we'll score the back of that very lightly. And then put them together. Then it'll be strong enough. I have made them by just putting that piece and making a coil, not making a tube out of that and then make it into a vase. But it's not guaranteed and it's prone to failure. So since we are going for success, not that I have it all that often, then it seemed like a good idea to, this is, makes it a more guaranteed project that's more likely to turn out. So this is not wet. I can put it down. And I'm just going to score it a little bit. Not, I'm going to try scoring it where it's not as so thin because it shows through the marks from scoring. This is called the pinprick system of scoring. And now I'm going to put this on here and drop it so that's attachment. And I might as well cut it. So there is a bubble. I forgot about that problem with this part. Okay, so now I'm cutting out um, this tile piece and I'm going to make it into uh, four tiles and show you two ways of dealing with it. I could have made this into a vase. I could have made it into a bowl my mother would have not liked because it was too bumpy. So you push down with these and then pick up. And I'm going to leave it in there because I don't want to distort it any more than I have to. Okay, so there are four tiles. They need to be cleaned up a little bit. Get rid of this stuff. And you can, you can mount them this way. This is a uh, three, it's about a three and a fourth inch. It's made for considering shrinkage. And they're made by a guy who used to be handle maintenance for a huge school. And now he has a big one-man tile cutter operation. He can make fish for you. He can make rabbits for you. He can make anything. Um, they, it's a great tool. It's stainless steel. One way to mount it is to get a board just a little bit, about a fourth of an inch less square size, and then paint it black, and then glue them on with a good glue like E6000. Mm -hmm.